This is the plaintiff, Charlene Mestaz. She says the defendant's mortuary mistakenly destroyed her deceased father's personal belongings. Now she has nothing left to remember him by. The defendant made a grave mistake and cremated her father's favorite shirt, jeans, underwear, and socks, items that were supposed to be returned to her. An error like this should never happen, and she's here seeking justice in the amount of $10,000, the money she says she surely owed. This is the defendant, Richard. He admits making a terrible mistake regarding the cremation of the plaintiff's father and offered her $500, the approximate cost of the destroyed clothing. This woman suing him for an outrageous sum of $10,000 in a clear attempt to profit personally over a small oversight. He's accused of making a grave mistake. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff is just grieving, says that uh, she had her father cremated and the funeral home accidentally burned all of his clothing and that's all she had to remember him by. She wants 10 grand for that. Now the defendant says that he, they feel like the, the woman is taking advantage of an unfortunate mistake. It's the case of grave injustice. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Mestas, you are suing Mr. Richard's mortuary company for $10,000 that you say he should pay you because they made a mistake and, and rather than returning the clothes your father had on at the time of cremation, they burned the clothes with him. All right, tell me what happened. Uh, yes, I went to their mortuary uh, on February 21st and uh, to make the funeral service plans of, for my father. At that time, I advised them that it meant a lot to me to for the clothes to be returned to me because all his belongings were separated from my brothers and sisters. And Do you mean divided between your brothers? And, okay, go on. Yes. Mm -hmm. They gave me the honor of choosing his clothing uh, and that clothing, those clothing, uh, I that was going to be returned to me. That was the one item that I asked my um, my siblings if I could keep, and we all agreed. And so when I went in, uh, uh, you know, those, those are the clothing that that he wore, and I asked to what return. What was the clothing? It was his favorite shirt. Which was what kind of a shirt? It was a, a regular uh, dressy shorts, you know, sleeve his his style of of shirt and okay. jeans. And jeans. His belt. And a belt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, belt. And underclothes. Okay. Was the belt any particular designer or something? Or no, it was just sentimental value because it's his belt and his favorite shirt and his jeans. It was nothing uh, that was, it cost a lot. No name brand. Okay. It was did, my was, father. Did you have a viewing of the body before the, uh, is that why he was dressed up? Yes. Okay. So you had your viewing. And then after that, he was cremated and the clothes was supposed to be taken off of him and returned to you. And it was not correct. Correct. And you folks admit that you made that mistake, right, Mr. Richard? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. And how did the mistake get made? Well, what happens? We have a uh, inventory and it's made out. We have uh, arrangements. Our counselor takes notes. The uh, information that is provided to the people who do the dressing, the casketing, uh, the makeup, embalming, and for whatever reason, that list, uh, they, they inadvertently omitted to take the clothing off and he was cremated, you know, with the clothing. Okay, so when you learn that this has happened, Ms. Mestas, what, is, what do you do? Uh, when I got the text, our consular, that's what they're called, the ones that make the arrangements, uh, she called me to let me know that my father's ashes were ready. At that time, I immediately asked about his clothing. Uh, she said that they're at the other mortuary, uh, that she would get back to me. Shortly after, she texted me. Uh, she said that she was very sorry to inform me that they didn't take off the clothes. 
and uh, that they went to the, she went to the crematory with all his clothes. She said that she was very sorry. Uh, at that now, can I, I uh, hold on. Uh, let's put a pin in that one second. Let me just ask you, Mr. Richard. Typically speaking, does the person go to the crematory with clothes? Yes and no. It depends on the family. Uh, it also depends if it's like an immediate cremation. There will be no service, no viewing. Then he just up in the seat and their loved one is wrapped in a sheet and taken to the crematory. In this case, there was a service. A person was dressed and fully clothed, embalmed. And uh, the, she's correct. The clothing should have been removed and returned to her. Okay. And, and now I not. know in her case, clothing should have been removed and returned to her. I guess what I'm asking is, what percentage of cases does the person who has a viewing and the person and their loved one is dressed, what percentage of them say, I want the clothing back? Is it a, a big percentage? Now, I would say about 10, 20 percent at the most. Right. That's what I was thinking, that most people would. All right. I got that. All right. Um, OK, there's no question that they made a mistake. I think the question here and the debate is what that mistake is worth. It's sad. You're suing for $10,000 because you feel the funeral should be free because you paid for the, the funeral services were, and the casket and the, the uh, cremation. Uh, and the urn and the everything was $5,281, and you want every penny of that returned to you. Then you want them to pay you $250 for a slideshow. Why? Uh, it's, uh, Your Honor, it's not about the money. It's, it's just well, that it, I... Well, it is because I have to go through these three things, mm -hmm. though. I'm sorry. Um, is, it, is that the only other cost to the funeral? Is that why you put it in there? It's, it's not. We still owe, oh, and at the time when I spoke with Mr. Guerrera, I believe his name was, uh, I advised him that we still owed, because we're burying his ashes, we still owed at the time $7,000. So to bury my dad's ashes, we still need $3,500 to still, you know, for his, besides the funeral home, uh, the cemetery, it costs to bury my father as well. Right, because you're going to bury the ashes as opposed to, Correct. you know, disposing of them in some other way that people do, like in the ocean or the water or whatever. All right, I understand that. What I'm asking you, though, is um, you've, you've made it into a $10,000 lawsuit, and the answer to why should never be because I need the money. It needs to be because mm -hmm. they hurt you to the tune of $10,000. In other words, there's two parts to every lawsuit. One of them is, judge, they've done me wrong. You've proven that beyond any doubt. He says, hey, we did her wrong. We, we made a mistake. All right. The second part of a lawsuit, though, is, and I have been damaged to the tune of X. Mm -hmm. OK? They offered you $500 for a shirt, a belt, and pants. And you said, that's not enough. I want what? Uh, well, I felt that that was an insult, because they cannot give me back my dad's personal clothes. That Where did his other clothes, the rest of his clothing went to your siblings, right? Okay, yes, I hope, I hope, separate. this has nothing to do with the case, but I hope your siblings, if, if keeping a piece of his clothing is something meaningful to you, I hope that your siblings have given you some of his clothing so that you can, uh, it can be meaningful for you. It, it was, they're still fighting with each other over a sweater. Over clothes? Over a sweater? So, a sweater. Oh my God. So it's, it, it, it meant because my dad didn't have much, mm -hmm. so what we did have you well, know, your, dad, your dad would be very upset if he thought people were fighting over a sweater. Believe me. Yeah. I know. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's where we are. In virtually every state, the thing you would be entitled to would be the value of the clothing, period, the value of the clothing, because mm -hmm. that's what was taken from you. And the value of the clothing is a very small amount, right, because it's just a shirt and jeans. And In your state of California, they... God bless the great state of California. They decide, unlike most states, that you can put a value on passion. You can put a value on sentimental meaning for someone. Um, I was kind of surprised to learn that, you know, of course, I am bound by the, by the law from wherever you're from, because that's one of the promises we make to you when you uh, agree to have your case heard on the people's court. I'm not going to apply law that I want to pick out of a hat. I'm going to apply the, the law that pertains to your case. So in your state, um, judges are allowed to add for sentimental value. The thing is, you're asking me to add 20,000 times what it's worth or something. You're asking me for a lot of money. 
And mm. I'm gonna have to hear from you besides how much you loved your father and that this was meaningful to you. I, I understand that and that they messed up. I, I understand that too. But why would it be $10,000? Your Honor, not only is it a breach of contract mm -hmm. that they made this error because I specifically asked sure. them a few times. I know. And I don't feel that, you know, this error, if they don't, if it, it could happen again. And I don't want anybody else going through this. Uh, my dad's belongings meant everything to me. Um, you know, it was untimely. His death was untimely. And he can't replace that. How did, how did your dad die? A heart attack. A heart attack. I'm so sorry. That's very sudden. And and it's it's his clothing, his smell, his cologne, and those smell, those clothing that they cannot replace. It's not it's not the designer. It's not it's that it's gone yeah. forever. They cannot replace what they have taken from me. Not an apology, not money, nothing. It's gone. And that's, that's what I think they should pay for. Whatever amount that is that you think that that's worth, that is what they should pay for. Welcome back to the People's Court. Look, the defendant admits his mortician made a very bad mistake. The question, is that mistake worth $10,000? Let's see what the judge thinks. It was after the fact that I realized there was some disagreement amongst the plaintiff's family. I know that the aunt, uh, the sister of the decedent came in and paid for the funeral and that we were instructed by plaintiff herself not to give or allow the aunt to put anything in the casket. So uh, there were some odd problems that we always face every so often from families that don't get along. But other than that, Wait, did she liability. place something? I'm sorry, did she place something in the casket? No, no. Okay. Uh, plaintiff would not allow it. So we told the aunt that she could not. What was she trying to because place in the casket? I'm not too sure. Maybe jewelry or something. But our counselor notified her that she could not. She didn't have permission from the plaintiff, who was the next of kin and daughter. Do you know what he's talking about, Ms. Mistas? It was she wanted ashes after and I said that no because we weren't going to separate his ashes she didn't ask to put anything in oh, his casket okay. anybody that asked me to put like you know we had listed there was an heirloom handkerchief that was put in there that they asked me if they could put in I had no problem anybody putting anything in the casket with him because the belongings were there was an be heirloom returned. handkerchief yes that somebody had put what in made there. the handkerchief an heirloom because it was uh, given to this person many years ago when he was younger from my dad and okay. and uh, and he asked if he could put it back in there because okay. it was okay. given to him from my father. Okay. All right, Mr. Richard, here's how I see this. This is an error that you guys did and uh, and you own up to it. And it's really sort of at my discretion what to value it as. Um, I, I happen to think that your offer of 500 was a very appropriate offer. I do think that. Um, it's not outside the realm. I'm going to value it at more than that. And I believe that she should be able to get $1,000 for the error, which means that she'd be getting $1,000 off of the funeral cost because this is a big deal and she lives in a state where it's allowed to be a big deal. And uh, the degree of her passion is what matters in my ruling, which I find to be a very strange law indeed. Because uh, if someone is particularly emotional, it's worth X. And if someone is just upset and not emotional, it's worth Y. I think this is a, a, a rocky way to do things, but God bless California. And um, it is sentimental, right? It is a sentimental thing. And there's no question that the error was made. And she was so careful about making sure that the error wouldn't be made that somebody should have been a little more on the ball. But I'm not going to award you $10,000. I think that's vastly excessive. I find $1,000 is more than generous, and that's my ruling. Good luck, folks. Thank you. And I'm sorry for your loss, darling. Thank you, Your Honor.
So this rather emotional case, the plaintiff does uh, prevail. She's only getting $1,000 from the defendant, not $10,000 that she sought. Uh, Mr. Richard, you're the defendant. Let me ask you about your opinion of the judge's decision. What are you, what are you thinking? Well, we actually were family-owned, family-operated, and we just want to, we would hope the family would come back to us, you know. We admitted mistake, and that's usually the big part. Nobody wants to admit they made a mistake. We admit it. We made a mistake. We rectified it, and we want to go ahead and just walk away with this and hope that we can still uh, have their business and come back to us at some future time. All right. Well, you put it very well. Good enough. Thank you very much. Ms. Mastaz, let me ask you something. Some people may be wondering why your father's articles of clothing are so important and what would you do with them? You can't sit them on a mantelpiece or in a bookcase, something like that. Uh, how would you answer that? Why? Because they're my father's. That's why. And it's something that I could keep forever, whether it's in the closet or whether I were to hang it in the mantle. Uh, that's up to me. But that's something that I, I was going to keep forever of my dad's. All right. Well, I know it's a very emotional issue for you. We all understand, and I'm sorry this happened, but you're, you're going to get $1,000. How about that? What, what's your reaction to that? You sued for $10,000, you know? You upset oh, about that? I'm blessed to get, get anything. I mean, it's not, it, again, it wasn't about the money. It was that, you know, they, that was a huge error. And I, want to be, I wanted to prevent it from happening to anybody else. Uh, and... Again, it wasn't about the money. Any money that is received is a blessing. All right. Well, as you know, the defendant did admit it was a mistake on their part, and obviously they're very sorry as well. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and that'll bring this case to a close. Harvey, what do you think? Thank you. Well, Doug, here's one thing you should think about. These funeral homes are licensed by the state they're in. And you can go to the licensing board, file a complaint, and sometimes that's enough of a pressure point to get what you're after. You're not going to get $10,000 in this case, but maybe you would get $1,000 without having to spend the time and money going to court. I have some tall pine trees on my property in Asheville, North Carolina, next to a neighbor's house. If the trees are alive and fall on their house, would I be responsible for the damage? You are only responsible for that damage if the tree was diseased and you knew or should have known that it was diseased. Right. Um, if it's something inside of it that caused it to splinter off, you're not. And if it's a, a storm. Earthquake. An earthquake, you're not responsible. Right. Um, so it's only if you know the tree is diseased right. and, uh, and there, a diseased tree, that can right. happen. A branch can fall off. Uh, that you would be responsible. So right. you need to know your trees are healthy. Right. But you don't Alive to... isn't the question. Healthy. Right. At healthy to the naked eye, because you don't have to examine. You don't have to go inside each tree and test it. It's just healthy to the naked eye. Uh, by the way, those remember those giant pine trees that we saw in California that were dropping pine cones that looked like pineapples? Yes. <laughs> those things would hurt you. Oh, hit sure. You in the head. I mean, oh, sure. Picking them up off the ground. To say nothing of what a branch would do. Right, right. right. And uh, Asheville, North Carolina, is a beautiful place, beautiful. and they do have a pinball museum in Asheville. Oh, thank so God. I was so worried about that's that. That's a place we have to visit. I was thinking visit. of little else. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to do it for us now, and we will see you in the next session of the People's Court.